Hi, everyone. Pam Ament, your CFWC president. I just wanted to welcome you to tonight's workshop on our own history in California Federation. And um, we hope that you enjoy it. I am going to sign off for now as we let people into the room and get ready for you, but we will be starting shortly. Stay in touch. Bye. We are recording again. I want to welcome all of you tonight to our Twilight Tidbits in April. Um, we have tonight Julie Leenbauer, who I've known for quite a long time. She's a lovely lady, and you'll okay. know that in a moment, too. Um, she is our Women's History Resource Center chairman, which is, a, a you'll see the acronym all the time, WHRC, but it does stand for Women's History Resource Center, and um, she's happy to share with you what she's found tonight. Okay, so we are videotaping, or whatever they call it now, off your computer with Zoom. Um, you can sit, see that I'm, I'm still old school videotaping. Um, it will go up on the CFWC Facebook page when it's available, probably tomorrow morning. That Facebook page is called GFWC, California Federation of Women's Clubs. It is also a place where you can find out a lot of information, which is great. And today I approved and saw our brand new YouTube channel, same title, GFWC, California Federation of Women's Clubs, and they have started moving all of the taped workshops that we've had all this year so far into that area so that you'll be able to watch it because we can only play one at a time on Facebook. That's uh, what we've paid for with Zoom. So this is huge for us to be able to offer them to all of you. And I know that That's you're great. just gonna love that. And without further ado, I'm going to be introducing Julie Leenbauer, who is a familiar face in California <laughs> Federation. She has gone through all of the finance offices, with, that's how I met her the first time. And um, when I first started coming to state, she's just a fabulous person and a really nice lady. And, um, you know, a while ago we had a little problem and it was an unfortunate incident. We had to have somebody step into the finance team and Julie was the person who volunteered to come back and be that person for California for another administration. And so it's, it's just an honor to have her as a chairman in this administration. Without further ado, Julie Leenbauer, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam, for the kind words. Uh, good evening, ladies, and thank you for attending this work, Twilight Work tidbits. I can't even talk. At the last CFWC board meeting, Host has spotlighted your, okay. Uh, I decided to speak about the years that it took CFWC to uh, put together and, uh, I can't even read what I wrote down here. Uh, oh, I, they spent all the years that they spent saving for, to buy the uh, grove of trees. Uh, those, uh, so, and I know some of you were not present at that meeting. So I thought I'd review a little bit of that first so that you'd understand maybe more of what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, CFWC at their first convention in 1902 had already started preliminary work preventing the destruction of the coast range, which began as a community effort. The 1902, 1903 convention, the forestry committee reported trees planting and the establishment of parks and playgrounds. Every convention report told of five miles of trees planted in one day. Large numbers of trees along the highways, 5,436 trees planted in town and 24 miles of roadway. 1908-1910, the convention, the Forestry Committee was interested in public versus private ownership of public forests. Support for a Bureau of Forestry was urged. CFWC asked other organizations to join forces to save the Calaveras big trees. In 1910-1912, a bill was endorsed requesting immediate steps be taken for acquisition of a Redwood National Park in Humboldt County. 
1914-15, the Forestry Department worked for the preservation of trees along Tahoe Wagon Road, securing a redwood grove in Humboldt County. 1921-23, the Federation voted to raise money by assessing each member $1 to purchase a redwood grove. Within five years, they had raised $45,000. 1923 to 25, convention or CFWC continued the campaign for the Memorial Redwood Grove. 1925-27, CFWC planted 20,000 trees and negotiated for the purchase of 60 acres of giant redwoods, as $42,000 was in the Redwood Fund. 1927-1929, the state of California passed a constitutional amendment permitting the state to issue $6,000 in bonds for state parks, 600,000, I should say. Well, this bond made it possible for CFWC to match the Redwood Fund with an equal amount of bond issue and purchase the 90,000 Redwood Grove. The Memorial Grove is in the Jordan Creek tract. So this is what I covered the last time. Now, since then, you know how it is when you read and then you read, you have more questions. So I've done a lot of reading in the last couple of weeks, but uh, I still have questions. Um, I came across a book. Which is the Diamond Jubilee History Highlights. This is from 1900 to 1975. Okay. So in here, it gave me, this is where the information I just gave came from, okay? So I thought, well, I have to somewhere have more information. So I got to looking for books that would give me this information. And this book has been on my shelf and I have never read it. And it's very interesting. If you can come across one, you have uh, just years, I think this, started and it was published in 1991 under Rosemary Newton's administration. And uh, in here, there is a, tells all about the white line they put down the highway, how it got there, when the, you know, how they did it. Okay, this is, and I was gonna copy all this and then I thought, well, that's kind of silly to copy it and then just, you know, have the book, I could read it. Anyway, this is called the California Redwoods, okay? And this kind of answers your questions, it even answers, Pam's question. Okay, it says, since the early beginnings of the California Federation of Women's Clubs, our members have shown great interest in preserving one of California's great treasures, the California Redwoods. Mrs. Joseph McCracken owned a ranch in the Santa Cruz Mountains surrounded by a grove of old redwood trees. Both the ranch and the trees were burned to the ground due to a fire caused by careless lumbering practices. The San Jose Women's Club joined with other organizations in the area to appeal to the legislators to save the Redwoods from further destruction. 1902, a bill was signed by the governor designating 3,800 acres of Redwoods in the Santa Cruz Mountains to be known as Big Basin Park and a second smaller grove as the Felton Trees as state parks, as state parks, okay? Through the years, more acreage has been added to both parks and they are both enjoyed by thousands of visitors each year. Years past, redwood groves further to the north became lucrative targets for the lumber industry. In 1923, a CFWC convention was held in Humboldt County. Clubs from Trinidad to Ferndale and Garberville were actively represented for the occasion. The Eureka ladies handled the major arrangements on the scene. The local newspaper warmly welcomed the California Federation to the area reporting. This is one of the most important gatherings of this kind ever had here and we shall be recognized throughout the state as a result. The keynote address was entitled, Conservation, the Hope of Civilization. With this theme in mind, a picnic lunch was planned for the delegation in the Redwood Forest. Okay. Ferndale, the Fortuna Monday Club, the Carlotta's Women's Club, the Garberville Women's Club, and several Eureka Men's Clubs helped in the plans for this outing. The men helped provide transportation and the ladies carefully prepared lunches suitably packed and carefully built redwood boxes, which served as quaint souvenirs of the occasion. The genuine beauty of the surroundings left an indelible impression 
on the large group, already sensitized to the need for conservation to preserve the oldest old of the groves. On the following day, Monday the 5th of 1923, the convention members pledged themselves as representatives of 60,000 California club women to give $1 each to purchase a grove of redwood trees for preservation. This was a culmination of many years of effort on the part of the California Federation with several active political and fundraising groups from 1906 onward. It was the fulfillment of a dream envisioned by the Humboldt women in 1908. It took 15 years to arouse enough sentiment and appreciation of the beauty and historic value of the redwoods needed to make this a statewide project. May 1925, the state convention was held in Santa Cruz, and it was at this meeting the California Federation of Women's Clubs presented to the state the splendid sum of $36,690. In making this presentation, Mrs. John G. Herghart, CFWC president from 1923 to 25, stated, our gift goes to the state from 70,000 with the earnest petition that Washington will make it, make it possible to preserve the remaining stand of our forest giants. Within this gift lie many precious memories In preservation of forest pioneers. We also honor California's pioneers. Individual trees have been purchased in honor of lives that have gone into making a California history or are still working to preserve her unity or increase her usefulness. This sum to be used in the purchase of Redwood Grove in Humboldt County on the acreage along the Eel River, North Dyerville Flats to be forever a part of the Redwood parks of the state. It says that funds were deposited with interest until the passage of the state park bill through which the state would contribute an amount equal to any private contribution towards the preservation of the redwoods. The passage of the bill finally made it possible to proceed and the announcement of the purchase was made February 28, 1932. During the two year 1931 to 33, Memorial Hearthstone evolved. In May of 1933, a, a, a service was held on a late Sunday afternoon with shafts of light filtering down upon the faces of the group gathered around the four glowing fires built on Federation's hearthstones in California. At this time, the names of the donors of the fund, the history of its achievement, and other interesting data was placed in a metal box and sealed at it as a permanent record beneath one of the four stone hearths. To those familiar with the history of the Redwood Grove, it stands for several interesting points. A project big enough for a big group and vital enough to enlist the whole state. Leadership which through successive administrations gave it unchallenged continuity. The facility for adjusting often conflicting interests to a great enterprise and the disregard of time, energy, and money by the women devoting themselves to it. We have today a piece of work which will survive 20 years of change and stand as one more monument to Federation vision and united strength. By their works, ye shall that know them, March, this is from the Federation News of March, 1938. A second grove of Redwoods was dedicated in September, 1946. This grove known as the Miracle Memorial Grove in memory of Mrs. Wall Wallace Miracle a former member of Federation active in conservation projects for many years. It is located about 50 miles north of Eureka. This article came from the California Federation News 40, 38 and 40, and this was from the Eureka Women's Club History. And Patricia Newell was the historian in 1989. Uh, there was a little article here too. It says, CFWC Redwood Grove in Humboldt County near Weot. And it says, the great hearthstone there was built through the efforts of the California Federation of Women's Clubs and is inscribed. These are the oldest of living things, what wisdom forests teach. Stirrings men hearts to thoughts deeper than speech. Lo in the forest there comes contentment, peace, and the sweet companionship of nature. Would we would we were as great as these and men were as brotherly as trees. This was erected in 1932 and was dedicated to our state park system for all marvel at and enjoy. Uh, 
Okay, so that explains. Pam, now you know what they buried. Uh, now I have to go back down here. Okay. Uh, oh, I know what it was. When looking for this um, information or any information, I happened to go on the, it's uh, GFWC California Federation Grove. And there's an article in there by a Dan Merrill and in, uh, it's called the Women's Federation Grove, a hidden gem in the Redwoods. And it also has a map that tells you how to get there, shows you how to get there. And an article about all of these, uh, about uh, the, the, the Federation putting it there. So it's a nice article. Um, so that was what I had next. Uh, Oh, yeah, okay. And there I also received, I thought it was very appropriate at this time, a envelope full of uh, information maps to an organization called, uh, what did I think of that? Where did it go? Okay, Redwood, it's the Save the Redwoods League. And it is a map, it's a map of all the, of the Redwoods and the, See it anyway. So I thought that was very appropriate. It came at the at the time that it did. Might be something if some of the, the clubs wish to participate in this, uh, you know, this too, that would be something for them to do. Um, okay. Uh, Okay, I did that. Okay, that's what I know so far about the Grove. I keep reading and looking. Maybe I can find out more. Now, Pam, you know about the box now, but it doesn't tell you, it doesn't tell you where it is, but it's there someplace. Okay, um, but you can't mention these trees without us talking about Penny Pine. And Penny Pines is listed here in this book, I was surprised. Um, I believe if I read this correctly, it started with Federation in, uh, in 19, uh, 1940s, is what I remember reading? Could it be that old? Yep, wrong way. There's too many things in this book is my problem. And I read so many and I can't, and you know how it is and you can't remember where you read them, but you know that you read them. Oh, here's Penny Pines. Yeah, it started, this article was written in October of 1940. So I assume that's probably how many years we have worked with Penny Pines. Uh, and we also have, these are the forms that you laid on. How many of you have started uh, donating again? I do know for a long time, for the year practically, they have been closed. So they are starting up again now. I understand that these are available. We got them, our dean put them in our, in our district newsletter. And uh, it did tell in here, which I did not know, that your $68 is an acre, pretty much pays for an acre of trees. And so, I, and I didn't know that, and I've been doing Penny Pines for years. Uh, anyway, you need this to send in, this paper needs to be sent in, and then they will in turn send you the paperwork you need to be able to donate. It's not where, you, I know you used to, we used to sit down and send, fill out the check and send it, but they don't do that anymore. And there's a listing here that tells you all of the forests in which you can donate to. So, but you have to write to them to get that information. Okay. Okay, I have, there's a few things I have when that, you start reading this, there's things that it's like, oh, how many things I, I never knew that Women's Club did. And so I marked a few of these down. Um, I know most all of us know about the white lines that was put down the middle of the highway for 
you know, seeing a knight. There's a complete article in here about from was written by the lady that got the white line put there. And uh, it's it's interesting, but I know you all know about all the white lines. Uh, this one I'm going to read is White Canes, it's called. It says the Alameda District had been strong for sponsoring worthy projects. We have started many of vital concern. In fact, because of our interest, we have aroused public opinion and one active support of other organizations to do likewise. The project Electrostrex was a distribution of white canes to be carried by the blind on the streets. The first white canes made their appearance on the streets of Berkeley June the 5th of 1931. And Mrs. L. Ford Eddy, then president of the East Bay Blind Women's Club, received one. She was also the first blind person in the United States to obtain a seeing eye dog. It was May 22nd, 1931, that the White Cane Movement was sponsored by Alameda District, and a request made that the matter be brought to the attention of the governor. Today, the use of white canes by the blind is statewide, and many a person is guided by a seeing eye dog largely because of Club Woman of Alameda District. This is from Mrs. Luther Williamson uh, from January 1941. We have the white line. Oh, and then then where do you want to go back? This other article is about the flu epidemic. And after all the COVID stuff, it says in sickness and in health. Another noble service performed by our ladies was during the epidemic of 1918. Things were so bad that Mrs. Woodbridge called on Mrs. Brown and said, Carrie, we do have to do something about this situation. People are dying like flies. Doctors are exhausted and there aren't any nurses. So the ladies then got to work, did a lot of phoning to get their faithful workers out and were determined to help the cause. They found an empty building known as the Old Tanner House on Vernon Street and got out the buckets, mops and cleaning materials and got to work cleaning the deserted place. After the hard cleaning job was finished, they asked people to donate beds, springs, mattresses and bedding and soon had a hospital. Equipped with a kitchen, ready for patients. Very soon the place was filled with the ladies worked if different shifts day and night, taking care of the patients and cooking for them. Finally, they were able to get a trained nurse from San Francisco to come help. Dr. Louise Jones, a young high school, doctor, okay, that's what it says, a young high school boy in those days was glad to help the ladies on the night shifts. Mildred Brown had the only car, which was greatly in demand. Soup was made and goes on to tell the ladies uh, worked and changed and this, this was from the Women's Improvement Club of Roseville from 1953 and 26. Hmm. It says, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Uh, the other project that has always interested me and I've always been very proud to be a part of, and that's been our El Camino Real Bells. Uh, it's very, I've had a hard time finding information about it. I mean, I know what happened in the last segment where we went in and replaced bells. And, you know, the, I know there is a listing, but as actual information, it's been really hard to find anything. Uh, I think we, as clubs, we need to get in and, or even districts, and see where our, if our bells are still there, if what kind of condition they're in. It's nothing more, um, what am I going to say, it makes me very proud when I go down 101 and every two miles, there's a bell there with a sign on it. And uh, last weekend, my husband and I were driving out, out by the 91 freeway in Imperial, and in front of a uh, I think it was a CVS a drugstore, there is an El Camino Real Bell, and I'm going, looky, 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 you know, and I think uh, to preserve part of our history, we're going to have to go and make sure that they're still there, and clubs need, uh, another thing too is clubs need to get in and make sure you know where your minutes are, where your treasures reports are. It's really hard to uh, make a history, and it's, you know, I have really old information but i don't know what where it's going to end up at i have stuff way back not only for my district my club but also the la let's have that here i have in case anybody's interested you would need these 
I have the yearbooks for Los, Los Angeles District from 1933. Well, there's a few you're missing here and there until 1954. Los Angeles County uh, from 1939, 1940 to 1956. Oh. And one book, I have one book from Mallee Metropolitan District. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's interested in any of these old books, they're more than welcome. Uh, so just make sure that you know where the things are. I think there's a lot of clubs that if you ask, and I have asked, they'll say, I don't know where our minutes are. I don't know where things are. So if we want to preserve the history and be able to make more history books, then you're going to, you know, we're all going to need to do it. So that's all I have for now. If uh, there are any um, questions, anybody? No? I'm Wait. sure there are going to be some questions. There they come. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> oh I think it's wonderful. I talked with Julie today and we were talking about the documents. And I had told her that when I stepped into the position of second vice president of state, I had documents going back many, many years with um, the president's name on it. I had things that were surrendered to Chris Herzog, things that were surrendered to Valerie, things that were, and they were just going from second vice president yeah. to second second vice president to second vice president. And so when we moved our storage for Southern California, because we have a Northern California storage and we have a Southern California storage, I made sure that we put a new file folder in the Downey Southern California storage because that's where I live is in Southern California. And I made sure that those documents were not going to go to Barbara Biley Beard, but that she knew that they right. were there because we can't get rid of that stuff. But, it, but we shouldn't have to keep them in our kitchens or under our beds collecting dust. I think it's important that we do know where everything is. And I, I know when I talked to Julie, I, I, I was telling her a story about one of the area meetings where a district came up to me and they said, you mentioned all these documents and that we should be keeping them and we just shredded everything. <laughs> and my first question was, did you put it on a USB drive at yeah. least? And they said, no. And so I, I think it's important that we do write these things down. Julie and I also talked today about the fact that this carousel of memories, which you've just heard a lot of information oh, there's from. there's a ton, ton of it. I, I love it. I have never seen that book, but we need to find where that book is or scan it in and yeah. start Tons updating that yeah. book. And just, and by updates, I mean, we don't change anything that's already there. We add where we stopped and catch up yeah. to where it is. She's got the bouquet of memories. That's what it is. Carousel yeah. of something Carousel is something else. Okay. Okay. Yes. So th that's the kind of thing that, that we really need to keep because I had asked about, we were, we were contacted by the Humboldt State Park. What is buried under the hearthstone? because it is lore to the rangers there. They wanted to know, and so we started asking questions, and Julie found the answer. That's great. Now she has a new project. We've been asked questions about awards to Walt Disney in 1955 <laughs> and 1961, so, which our state did, and none of us remember. None of us know. So, oh, Valerie knows. Okay. So now you know what okay. <laughs> But let's go ahead. And um, Sonia, if you want to start with the questions, that's great. Very good. So our first question comes from Lou. Lou, you had a question or a comment? Uh, yes, that was a really great presentation. So my question is, do you have like a quick tip sheet or something that you can share with everybody on like tips and best practices that you've used to pull up this history? I would love to share something like that with our own club because I hate to say it, we have stuff and we call them properties and we have properties in our president's closet, in our dean's closet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking, wow, there is probably some really great history there that we need to start documenting and maybe putting together. Um, but maybe some quick tips and tools or something you could share. Most of it is stuff I just read. Truthfully, I have, like I said, I have this, this book. And which somebody else has compiled. And then this is really old. This is 1900 to 1975. It's the first 75 years. And truthfully, 
I don't know where I got it from. I, got, I have a hunch it came from my dear friend Dolores Seguin, but I, I don't know. There's no names in it. And it these books I took, up, I put them on my bookcase. And my husband said to me the other day, where did you get that book from? I said, it was on the bookcase. And I had, <laughs> you know, they're, they're all, they're, this one is done by administration. It's done every, each year they compiled what, the, who was the president, the years where the convention was held, uh, how many members attended, how many clubs. So it's very informative. And, um, and it tells about their, um, the, um, uh, if whatever they passed, the laws they passed, the bills, the motto, just different things like that. And it has a picture of each one of the presidents. And this takes in, what is it, 75 years. Now my club did one and I meant to pull that out because it was interesting. It said that our district had uh, donated 22 bells. And uh, this talks, it, it's, this is like history to help everybody because it said they donated 22 bells, but they were not uh, designated to be put and the only one of them was to be put at the Banning House, which is close to where I live. And I didn't know that. It was like, really? I didn't know that. So it's just a history for, for anybody that comes after you that they know what you have done and what's been done. As far as, I don't know, unless you want to go through them and start just putting them on a, you know, a, a key or something that you would still have them. I, you know, I don't really know how to tell you to preserve it. Like I said, I have this old stuff, but I think most of the old stuff I have is stuff that came from Dolores. Her mother-in-law had been a founding member of my club and so they had saved from the mother-in-law and she, they had saved stuff for years and years and years. So unless you, then their books, they're all the little, you know, yearbooks that we all have. And uh, I would say probably your best thing is to try and put them on some kind of a key or what they, those little things they call that you can, and then maybe save them in the same way, do them by year. And then you wouldn't have, really wouldn't have to worry about keeping all that old stuff if you don't want to but you'd still have the history as long as the key doesn't get lost, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a big job. It's a big job for anybody, no matter how you look at it, you know, if you want to preserve it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Our next question or comment comes from Valerie. Valerie, you have a question or a comment? You know, one of my big things is is always worrying about our history. You know, we've been around for a long time and it really scares me. Like today I hear something and yeah, I remember Dolores Seguin. You know, I remember a lot of these other, I even told our president who was the real fudgy wudgy lady. <laughs> and you know, Rosemary, that was her claim to yeah. fame. Yeah. But, you know, I worry about those things passing. Uh, I know I've got things here in the house that as time comes, my sons aren't going to know what to do with it. We really have got to establish a place where we could start collecting every one of those books. You know, I sit here with the president's book that somebody else should be using you know, there are a bunch of ladies who buried that box in those bricks. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of sad to know none of us know who they are or where the darn box is. Yeah. It just says it's I under the fireplace. to make an effort right now to get to those daughters and those family members and not just have them throw the stuff out. Yeah. That ends my soapbox for tonight. Okay, thank you, Valerie. We appreciate your comments. Julie, did you want to respond or do you want me to move on to the next question? Uh, well, you know, I have one thing and I did forget. I want to thank Dory. You know, I know I don't think she's here, but uh, she you can get this at the ba uh, back of Quick Bites. It comes up and it's just a little uh, fold. It's not even a folder, it's like a little booklet. And you can cut them and put it together. And it, it's the history, a few facts you may not know. And it's, it is very interesting. It has a lot of history in it. So if 
you know, it's it's accessible, it doesn't cost you anything, you just have to take it off of there. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so thank you, Julie. Our next question or comment comes from Sandra. Sandra, you have a question or comment? Yes. Um, the first question is on that bouquet of memories. Who is the author? Maybe we can look it up that way. Yeah, it's, it doesn't have one. Well, yeah, it does, but it's from the, let me see here, in the front. Bouquet of memories, okay. okay. Published by California Federation of Women's Club in May of 1991. And it just is a bouquet. It says a collection of memories of California club women covering a span of 90 years of dedicated service and friendships. It was put out by CFWC. Uh, so uh, Monica's printing is the one that did the printing of it. Unless, you know, somebody told me one time that there's a lot of the stuff from CFWC pins and things like that, that people old, I guess, I don't wanna say old members, but past members have, they'll sell them on the internet. So it might be something other than that. I have absolutely no idea where you could get one. Unless you find somebody that has one. Okay. And my second you, question Julie. is a year and a half ago, uh, I went to Avila Beach and I went by a whole bunch of bells. Mm -hmm. And every time I went by one, I went, that's us, that's <laughs> us, that's <laughs> us. So, so uh, up to a year and a half ago, they were still there. Good. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Our next question or comment comes from Wendy Curran. Wendy. Thank you. Uh, I happen to have been a recipient of a bouquet book. Actually, I have two. And yeah. I have two. And my dear, dear friend, Pat Nix, gifted these to me. Mm -hmm. She was state president, nine, I'm going to cry, 92 through 94. And I will tell you, as you can see, my book has all kinds of pink things. I went through here when I was district president and you can't believe the different things that are in here about clubs, many of which are no longer in existence yeah. in my San Bernardino district, yeah. but there, it is a treasure trove. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, I will, I gave, I have one in the club book. I have one in the club box, but I think personally what we really need to do is take this and get it republished. Yeah. You know, it because, you know, we could uh, for a mere whatever dollars, everybody could have one of these. Right. It only goes through 1990. That's 30 years that have passed since yeah. this was put together. So yeah. we need to really look for 91 through 2021 and start gathering this information. Or as Valerie said, it's going to be lost. Yes. Thank you, Wendy. May I'll I pick out the please? book and get it to Pam. <laughs> you like that. All right, so our next question or comment comes from Vicki Holden. Vicki? Thank you. Uh, maybe I can answer some questions for you all. If you will go to Instant Impressions, Julie and Pam know where that is. Three years ago, I took the Jewel Box, which was a book of collected inspirations by club women. Uh, Carousel of Love and Joy, which was also a collection of his inspirational messages by club women, and Bouquet of Memories, which was a collection of writings from either that or I took Dreams in Print, one of the two, uh, to them and had them scanned and cleaned up. And I was hoping that they would eventually get printed. They probably still have them in their computer. So feel free to call Terry over there. Um, okay. I have an, another question, another comment. Uh, I think a lot of things from our past, past history might be found at Santa Cruz at the Microfish Library there at the university. Uh, what else did I have on here to tell you? Um, oh, the 75 year history. I think that Stephanie Zakiki incorporated part of that in the book she did on clubhouses. Oh, okay. 
other than that, I have no news for anybody except to say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hi, Vicki. <laughs> Glad you're here. Um, did you want to respond, Julie, or do you want me to move to the next person? Oh, you can move. Like Dr. Lear. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, our next question or comment comes from Shelly Cooper. Shelly? Yeah, I just wanted to say, and our club is very, very old, and we have our first minutes in 1890, and we have it in a plastic thing, and if we get it out, we put on our plastic, you know, because it's so old, but it's so interesting, and we have it. It goes from 1890, so we have a lot of this, and we have an old, old clubhouse, and it was in there till about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and um you know, that clubhouse is all wood and it could just snap, burn. So we got a new library in our little town and we took it over there and they keep it for us in the regular Fresno County Library in our little town. The problem is now during COVID, we can't, you know, we can't get into it. <laughs> yeah, okay. But that won't last forever. And But there is so much interesting. And in, the, in those days, all the way up to whenever, the history was, the minutes, basically the minutes. And then some of the presidents had president's books with, and you had photos from the, from the little local paper and the Fresno Bee in our case. And uh, so there is a lot, but nobody, it, it just kind of sits there and we don't do anything. We probably need to get some kind of, I don't know, history, historian committee, history committee or something and go through all that really old stuff. And I have a few books. I, I had them out, oh, about a year ago, and I tried to put them back in, and they won't take the stuff back in during the COVID, and you can't get things out. Oh. But I never gave them. I, I had it at my house because I was president. <clears throat> uh, I had the, the very first yearbook thing. And then we had things like, you know, a recipe, the first recipe book our club did. Now, I don't know about nowadays, we have those uh, reports we all do. And so that's part of the history, I think, more now. People go into more detail in those reports, maybe. I don't know, than just the club minutes and like that. So I don't know. It's a, there's a lot to this stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you, Shelly. Um, we appreciate all that information. That's really amazing. Julie, did you want to respond? Yeah, it's good that you know where it is, you know, you know that they have it there, which is good. A lot of the reports that came in, the clubs explained how they are, a lot of their things are at museums, you know, they've been able to put them at museums, right. so they know where it is, you know, which is good. Fantastic. Okay, so our next question or comment comes from Priscilla. Priscilla, welcome. Thank you. Um, I was, that was a very good presentation. I'm just so impressed and so odd in the, the history of the women's club. I mean, I know each club has history, but I was wondering, um, Pam, I don't know if you're still there, but um, if, you, you know, at conventions like the state convention, do they have like archive booths where, you know, you have all the archives stuff? No. No? Oh, so every club is just has basically their own history together. You don't have a place where all the history is. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, they do. Um, Julie, did you have a response to that? Do they, you know? We do have uh, most, I don't know, not club wise, but most of CFWC history is, is in archives, what they call archives at the University of Santa Cruz. And I understand it is accessible, but you have to go there and, you know, tell them what you want and that kind of, you know, it's not free access. Like you can't get on the internet and say, I want the book number 25 and they give, you know, they bring it up for you. That does, it doesn't work that way. Cause I'd have been there looking already if it did, but it uh, doesn't work that way. But that's all I know. Mostly it's up to each district or each club to main, to take care of their own, as far as I know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Our next question or comment is about Ellen. Ellen, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, I did a simple search at Amazon for California Federation of Women's Clubs and three books came up and two of them are claiming to be in public domain. 
y'all might want to research that and maybe have our lawyers go after them. Oh, interesting. Because they've reprinted them and one of one of them is even a Kindle version. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Yep. And you looked up what? All I did was search California Federation of Women's Clubs under Amazon.com and three different books came up. Club Life, which is a hardcover done by California International Sunshine Society, S-O-C-I-E-T. And then the other one is Historical Facts and Fancies, History and Landmark Section of the California Federation of Women's Clubs. Huh. Sold by Amazon.com services, which means we're getting no money from these. That's interesting. I wonder if it's actually something that we published. Uh, the logo's on one of them. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Ellen. Julie, uh -huh. did you have a response, or did you want me to move to the next person? Oh, okay, yeah, we'd have to okay. look at yeah. All right, Wendy Curran, you had a question or a comment? Really quickly, thank you, Sonia. Um, I have the original minutes of the Grand Terrace Women's Club, my home club, from 1908, written in pencil, and also the original Constitution with the amendments written in pencil, but the amendments were written in red ink and or red pencil rather and what i what i've done uh, and this is maybe a, a hint for shelly what i've done is i have taken them and transcribed what they said hmm. because the pages are so frail yeah and and even trying to preserve them might not might not save them but I have transcribed them, the minutes from from several meetings, the first the the actual list of the late the first ladies that came together. So for me, I've created yeah. a, an electronic document right. that that I can print out and and we have access to. Right. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, our next question or comment is from Kathy. Kathy. Kathy Hollins, did you want to unmute? That's Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. um, our president, Shelly Cooper, shared with me a few books, and one of them is this. I don't know, can you see it? No. Hang on a second. Okay. Why can't I see myself? I can see your picture, but not your face. I can see a beautiful photo of you, but oh, it's, it's because not... I hit. I okay, there we go. Okay, she shared Hi. this book with me, a bouquet okay. of memories. Okay, and then this is really cool. This is a hardbound book of Fowler Improvement Association's first. 1890 to 91, 1891 to 92 club minutes. Wow. Wow. And it's, I don't want to touch the pages too much, but it's all handwritten. Yes. Yes. It lists the ladies' names and, um, and it's, it's a hardbound book. And so, yeah, our club has some really cool history stuff, but I just happened to have these at my parents and I thought I would show you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. I really appreciate that. Um, the next person is Sandra. Sandra, you have a question or a comment? Uh, yes, I have that telephone number for instant impression if you want it because they're the ones that actually does our club books. And the phone number is 562-424-0982. Can you do it one more time, please? Sure. 562 424-0982. Thank you very much. All right. But the only thing, well, I don't know. I think they would have to do more than one. 
Uh, we have just a little bit more time. If anyone has any other additional questions or comments. I'm looking for something. Yes, else. Vicki Holden, you have a question or a comment? Julie, yeah. you might just call Terry over there. They was Those books were copied about, well, just before I left town. Okay. So, and they're ready to be banned. She has all the details on doing the binding and you everything. Pick so them up or they're there? They're there. I know we never had them printed. Oh, but she okay. has them in her computer. Okay. And uh, she'll remember what it is. Just yeah. tell her, you know. So, um, but I don't know whether Bouquet of Memories is there. And if somebody has a book, they could probably, she could probably scan that in too. Okay. And do I have printing mine. for us. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you. Um, the next question or comment is Lynn. Lynn, you had a question or comment? Um, I really do. This, not to be a Debbie Downer, but our club uh, gave the library uh, tons of our history and so forth. And uh, people in the library, after a long time, the library was going to move. And instead of contacting the women's club, which has always been in existence and very active, they did not, and they threw all our stuff out. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so we lost everything. But my my warning is, if you have things out in museums, libraries, whatever, check mm -hmm. on them frequently to make sure that they're still there and they have a contact person that they could contact in your club if the, they came to have to move them or do something with them rather than toss them. Yeah. Very good. Thank you for that. Those are really good words. Thank you. And um, Valerie, you had a question or a comment? I have a question for Ellen. You looked up at, at um, Amazon. And what did you look up? I typed in our full name, California Federation of Women's Clubs. All right. Thank you. Uh huh. All right. Um, I think Ellen, I'll we're just send you the URLs that I got. Thank you, Ellen. Um, I'm going to send it back to Pam because we're right at that time where we could go back to Pam. So, Pam. Okay. That was wonderful. Um, <clears throat> just to share a couple of things, I agree with Lynn. Um, one of my jobs in the city as a supervisor was to be in charge of the historical commission. And therefore I was in charge of the historical museum. At that time I belonged to the Redondo Beach Women's Club. We had no idea where our minutes were from 1912 to 1962. And when we renovated the museum, lo and behold, guess what Pam found and had to pre-box and put away. So um, they are there and they know that if we want them, that we need to go through the city council to get it. But um, it, was, it was an interesting find. So it's, it it's, works the other way too. Ask your museum, see if they've got something that maybe somebody before you, many years before you, gave away so that they didn't have to, to watch anything. The other thing is I'd just like to share with you something I did as a district president for my um, full two years in Marina, I collected the histories of every active club that we had. And I asked for two pages only and a picture of their clubhouse if they had one. But um, I also, anybody who belonged to a club that had defederated or, or went away, like Airport Marina was a club that went away during Sharon Hooper's um, administration, we collected histories for those two. And then at our convention, we had a booklet that we had printed and put together at everybody's seat that we just handed out as a, um, like a, a favor, a table favor, instead of having Jordan almonds or mints there, we gave them a history of the Marina district. And it, you know, it was a wonderful thing to work on. And I remember um, the lady who was, oh, now I can't remember her name, but she wears J King jewelry and she's in the orange district. And she was your women's history resource person, um, Vicki Holden. And um, we were winning all of the awards that year. 
and the next year because of that project, she called me up and she said, what are you doing in Marina? And I said, I have asked every club president to supply us with a history so that we have a written record. And that was, of course, in 2008, 2010 for me. So now, of course, things are 11 years later. And who knows, they might want to up update that. But just to give you a little idea, if you're thinking about something to do with your district or your area. Um, it was a lot of work. It sounds simple, but asking for two pages for clubs that are close to, to 100 years old is a big job to, to really get that summary report because they would have rather given me an entire chapter, but nobody's gonna read the chapter except that club. So we, we kept it to the two pages. I, I think this has been phenomenal, Julie, because we not only love Penny Pines and the Redwoods, but think about what we did under Chris Herzog at, from Kathy, um, Kathy McGraw through Chris Herzog. We were also collecting the money to put plaques on all the trees at the Capitol in Sacramento, which we finally did. That was over $20,000 easily. So we have a very special relationship with trees in this state. And if that makes us what Neil Diamond calls the tree huggers at the Greek theater, so be it, because I feel really good about the fact that we love our trees that much. And my last little story is as Dean, you remember Mary Ellen Brock had to plant a tree as part of her capital, uh, whatever it was that the eight projects she had, she wanted you to do like eight things. And when I put in the, because in our state, the Dean, the state of the Dean, it does the statistical report, at least that's the way it's been done for a while. <clears throat> I handed in that statistical report and said that we had planted X amount of acres with penny pines and it was about $36,000 that year that it went to penny pines. Deb Strahanowski had to call me to make sure it was not a, a typo on our end. <laughs> she could not believe how many trees and acreage we had paid for with penny pines that year. So I think that it's, it's really nice to hear the history and um, <clears throat> You know, it's funny that the Forest Service just contacted me and said, do you have any news about what's under that hearth? Because, you know, we're all told it's been story passed down after passed down after passed down as lore with these park rangers. And they were just trying to find out if there was anything real to the story. And so I will let her know, yes, it's there. And that'll be it because we don't want them digging that up. Yeah. That hearthstone was designed by Julia Morgan, who designed Hearst Castle. That is a fabulous hearthstone yeah, monument. Yes, and it is. So, yeah, they don't need to know exactly where it is. We'll just verify that, yes, it exists. That's it. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Julie. I'm going to ask Liz to come in and wind it up about our next, next week's Twilight Tidbit, I think. Lynn? <laughs> um, first of all, we have open house tomorrow night from from, right. fi from five to seven. And as the uh, Seinfeld uh, sitcom was uh, a sitcom about nothing in particular, our open house is about nothing in particular. And the subject goes wherever the wind blows. And it is so much fun. <laughs> our, our next and our next uh, Twilight tidbit, tidbit will be Monday night. It will be Dory, and it's all about leadership and leads. And on Saturday, I will be sending out three fabulous handouts. So everybody, watch for them in your uh, inbox. CFWC Reserve California is how they're going to come to you. And so our next one is Monday night, the 19th at seven o'clock. Thank you, that's exciting. And we all know that registration closed today at five o'clock. And so I, I look forward <laughs> to getting on to the next part of my job with that. I wanna wish you all well. Thank you very much, Julie. I appreciate your, your dedication to um, the homework that you did to help us tonight. and. Look forward to the uh, replay, ladies. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.
Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.